Hello, hello everybody, Emilio. Total blue. Emilio, you yeah, you look very blue, very I'm blue. very very blue, very blue. But but I missed the music. I mean. The... Yes. <laughs> Ciao Sebi! Ciao Sebi, ciao Sebi! Ciao Costas! Costantinos, but where are you? You're at the hospital. Yes, ciao Miki, I'm uh, on call. Ah, vedi, vedi, vedi! How are you? With your gravata. Ah, so nice. <laughs> it's, it's good that uh, some doctors are still working during uh, Sundays, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's not that good, but what can we do? I mean... You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Sebi, ciao, scusa me. Uh, we were just uh, uh, welcoming uh, Costas. Ciao, Sebi, ciao. You no, have a pink background. Sebi has a pink background. So, hello, everybody, for the episode number 24. Eh? Number 24. Which... Which is the the maximum uh, uh, of episodes which is allowed? Well, allowed is not. I mean, uh, yeah, whatever is allowed. But I would say that maybe we can say that the season one of the Moscovy Happy Hour will be concluded at eh. the end of May. Eh? So we will take off yes. the summer uh, the summer time. Yes. So we have still uh, one month, a little bit more than one month. And also the, the next two weeks, we will have an Eastern break. Next week is the Eastern, the Catholic Eastern, immediately afterwards, the Orthodox Eastern. So for these two Sundays, we will uh, not be here. Exactly. Uh, we will do a break. Then on May 1st, we come back. We will be uh, every Sunday here during May, so I think for five consecutive Sundays, and then uh, summer vacation and season one is completed. And let's see what's going to happen with season two. Yes, yes, but th this this sounds very like uh, like a program, right? You know, so it's very <laughs> no uh, season one, thirty episodes. So season two. At least 30 episodes. Let's yeah. see. Let's see. Let's see. We will see. We yeah. will see. So, but um, uh, let me also tell you that uh, I, I, I left Emilio uh, in uh, less than 24 hours ago because uh, we were together in a very nice course in Belgrade. Yeah. So finally yeah. back to face-to-face -face, uh, meetings. Yeah, it was yeah. so nice that, I mean, again, face to face, again, uh, I mean, this interaction that we missed so yeah. much. I mean, the fact that you can look at the eyes yes. of the people. And this was also, this was also very nice because in, um, uh, already in Zurich, when I landed uh, to, uh, uh, for the connection to Belgrade, there was no masks at all at the airport and also in Belgrade, no masks. So we were able to look at the faces of our, of our colleagues in, in the audience. So it was a very nice experience. Very and he nice. did as well. It was pretty chill, I think. All right, Demetrius? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Very good. Okay, question of the week. Sebi, what is the question of the week? Sebi. What is the question? What color do you prefer? Black, blue, gray, pink, orange, green. We have many other uh, colors this time. No? But come on, we did the same question last week. What happened? You didn't like the answer and you hope <laughs> it's going to change? It's not going to change, my friend. Hi, Nisa. Nisa is also here. Hi, Nisa. Nisa, how are you? Nisa, just unmute yourself because we don't hear you. Yeah. Hi, JP, uh, Emilio, Constantinos. How are you? <laughs> very, very good. good. Very, very good. good. Very, very good. good. Very good. You see, uh, the happy hour is now going on, uh, uh, at least in my side of the of the globe, uh, 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 during the day, you know? So yes. I still have... Uh, 
light outside. So that's why I'm still drinking water. Can you imagine? Yeah, water, but in a wine glass. In a wine glass, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine that I'm still drinking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Oh, oh blue is here. the winner. Blue is blue the winner. Is the winner again. Blue, blue is the, is the winner, again. but by far is the winner. Very yeah. good. And today, you know what we are talking about, Emilio? And we are talking about the blue color. Blue color. Yes. We are talking about the favorite color of the majority of the people. Yes, exactly. Why is blue so famous? Because, uh, I don't know, the blue of the sea, the blue of the sky. Sky, yeah. Even, even your background is blue, Emilio. And of your course. shirt as well. Of course, this is not, this was not by chance. This was in yeah. purpose. Last week, uh, you remember, I had an orange. <laughs> indeed, indeed, you did. Okay, my friends, I'm going to see patients. I will join in a while for the... Okay. For the Good. Udemoscopy, don't worry. Exactly. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. Sebi, give me the sharing ability. Give By the way, the since ability. we spoke about uh, the, the, uh, the, the concluding of season one, uh, maybe we can um, invite uh, the audience to send us ideas, if they have any idea, for the last episode. So what we could do in the last episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In case, in case you have... Uh, Sebi, 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 the sharing, sharing, Sebi. Allow give us me, to share. Give me, give me the sharing ability. Yeah. Share Joachim me. says that uh, he would like the program never to end. Yes, correct. The paper of the week. Thank you, Joachim, so much for your comment. Uh, this is one of the best ideas of dermatology in the world. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. So, Jeppy, I think that you, you uh, can share now the screen and yes. tell us which paper you selected to present this week. Yes, exactly. So I want to, uh, to introduce you with a, with a case, you know. Just let me, uh, let me introduce the, the, the topic of today with a case. So, Sebi, can you launch the question? Do you think it's uh, is this lesion a blue nevus, a melanoma, a regressive nevus, or a tattoo? Eh? And most probably, the paper of the week will be dealing with blue lesions. Eh? But is a blue nevus possible to undergo regression? So could we have a regressive blue nevus? And if so, how should it look like? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. I never saw a, blue, a, a regressive blue nevus, by the way. But the fibrotic blue nevus, yes. yes wow, okay. look at this. You know, everybody got it, basically. Look, wow, my God. Very this impressive. Exceptional. Look at this guy who was uh, doing a, such a nice tattoo <laughs> from here to eternity. Ah, my God, this is in, brilliant. Eh? Very philosophical. So, of course, you were able to uh, recognize this, uh, uh, this ink as a tattoo, but sometimes it's not so easy with blue lesions. Just to recall you, whenever we see blue, it's because we have pigment deep into the dermis. Eh? If we see black, we are in the superficial layers of the epidermis, in the stratum corneum. If, you see, if we see brown, we are at the level of, uh, of the junction, more or less. If we see gray, we are in the papillary dermis. But if we see blue, we are uh, 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 more deep into the dermis. I'm not sure how much do we, uh, are we able to see in deep, but certainly uh, in, the, in the reticular dermis, everything is colored, is, uh, uh, is blue. Eh? And more or less, these are the five most common uh, lesions that can be predominantly blue in color. Eh? You see a blue nevus in A, an hemangioma in B, a seborrheicheratosis, a very, very hard to, be, to, to, to recognize seborrheicheratosis in C, a melanoma in D, in the BCC, a basal cell carcinoma in E. Okay, and these are these five lesions were the topic of this study, which is this one. Eh? 
demoscopic predictors of benignity and malignancy in equivocal lesions predominated by blue color with Constantinos Lallas uh, as the first author. Is he, is he your son? <laughs> Not my son. He junior. He's a junior. He's a brilliant guy, uh, much uh, more, uh, you know, clever than me. And uh, yeah, he's very good. Yes, but, Junior uh, Lalas. Junior Lalas. Junior Lalas, very talented and passionate. But unfortunately, he will not be a dermatologist. He will be an oncologist. Yes, yes, he will be an oncologist. Yeah. Where, which is which is not bad, you know. It's not uh, bad. Very, not bad for very, him. It's bad for me. <laughs> yeah, it's bad for you. Yeah. So, uh, what is the problem here? The problem is that blue color eh, is in general, highly unspecific. So when we see blue, we are not able to differentiate if this is a blue uh, seborrheicidosis or melanoma or BCC. What is important is what we find around the blue color, okay? So this is the main principle. Uh, look at this uh, seborrheicidosis, it's blue. So it's in some way, uh, blue is rendering this, uh, this lesion uh, a little bit, uh, suspicious or, but it's not suspicious, it's unspecific. Blue color is unspecific, but since we see a lot of milia-like cysts and a, a lot of comito-like openings, we can conclude that this is a seborrheicidosis. And this is the topic of this, uh, of this paper, published, by the way, not in dermatology, practical and conceptual, but uh, in uh, dermatology, eh? in uh, the Swiss uh, journal, uh, um, which is a very has a very long tradition in uh, in the dermatology field. So, what is the result of this study performed on basically on these five types of lesions, which could predominantly be blue in dermoscopy? Uh, the, is the following. The, the main result is the fact that there are three predictors of a benign lesion. And these are blue color in more than 75% of the surface, this, uh, diffuse distribution of blue color, and third, absence of vessels. Okay, so these are the three predictors for a benign lesion. While there are two, uh, I don't know, three predictors of um, of uh, a, a malignant lesion, which is isometric distribution of blue color, blue, clo blue clots, the presence of blue clots, and the coexistence of gray color and linear vessels. Okay, so let's have a look if this works. Eh? So in A, we see a lesion which is typified by more than 75% of blue color in the lesion. Then uh, the, uh, the color is the, the, the blue color is diffuse, huh? and then uh, there is no vessels, okay? So this is a typical finding in a blue nevus. In B, we have uh, a lesion which is, uh, uh, let's say, well, could we say that it's less than 75%, the blue color? Yes, it's almost 50%, I would say. Yeah, it's more or less, uh, yeah, it's less than 75. Then there is definitely, uh, th there is uh, uh, definitely the presence of clots eh? and uh, a little bit of gray color. Eh? And therefore, uh, we can conclude that this is most probably a malignant lesion and this was in fact a melanoma. And in C, we see that uh, uh, the, the blue color is not seven, more than 75% and there are vessels, eh? gray color and vessels. So more or less, this uh, kind of, uh, uh, of three benign features and three malignant features are working pretty well. Again, here, let's see the five type of lesions which could predominantly be blue. Uh, uh, again, a blue nevus in A with 75%, um, more than 75% of blue color, diffuse, no vessels in B, we have an hemangioma typified by more than 75% of blue color, no vessels, and diffuse coloration. In C, can you describe C, Emilio? Well, concerning the blue color, not it's not easy. Uh, it's, it's not covering more than 75% of the lesion. There is some blue color, uh, mainly the background, uh, which is distributed uh, in... Uh, uh, 
I would say, in a rather diffuse way. So okay. it's, it's a but uh, certainly no vessels or no vessels. Yeah, no vessels. Yeah, it, it's a tricky lesion anyhow. Tricky lesion anyhow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While D and E are definitely uh, following the the rule of malignancy, so. Uh, not not uh, more than 75% of blue color um, and what else? Asymmetric distribution Asymmetric of the, of the blue color. Exactly. Asymmetric yeah. distribution and in E more or less the same asymmetric distribution uh, gray color and clots. Uh, gray, blue gray clots. Okay. So the, the rule is working but don't forget uh, a previous paper that we published a few years ago. Uh, well, quite a long time ago, let me tell you. Emilio was still a baby. Yeah. This, this paper was published when we met for the first time, you know, in Roma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he was... Uh, Let's say more than 10 years ago. We don't have to years say years how ago. many. More than 10. More than 10, yeah. And uh, uh, as you can see here, this is a nodular lesion which is typified only by uh, one criterion, which is blue and black, the combination of blue and black color. So sometimes uh, this... Uh, this uh, Clue is, is relevant, especially for the diagnosis of nodular melanoma. Eh? Nodular melanoma can be missing all the criteria we mentioned before. It, it can be missing all the additional melanoma specific criteria that we know very well, like streaks or pseudopods or globules or network and so on. And therefore, only the combination of blue and black makes this diagnosis possible. Okay, and that's it. But I would say that to keep things simple, eh? let's keep things simple. So we memorize all these criteria, we memorize all the features we know, and we memorize all the lesions that can be blue. I would uh, add also sometimes spitz nevi can be blue sometimes, and also other types of uh, types of, of uh, non melanocytic lesions like. Uh, uh, hemosiderotic dermatofibroma, uh, sometimes pilomatricoma, nexal tumors in general, they can be blue. So the rule that in my view, it's very simple to remember is that we should biopsy any predominantly blue lesion that cannot be clearly diagnosed as first blue nevus, second hemangioma, and third seborrheic keratosis. Do you agree, Emilio? Yes, of course, of course, sure. I yes. cannot imagine anything else blue, benign, and that can be diagnosed with, with confidence. Yes. Very nice. Okay, so uh, uh, let me add to this discussion a few cases that I have prepared, which are pretty much in line mm -hmm. with uh, what uh, you presented. And then we can, of course, as usually open the uh, discussion. So let me share my screen. And uh, I have prepared for you a few questions related to these cases. Let's start with the first question. Sebi, can you please launch the first question? We see here four lesions, A, B, C, and D. My question is, which one is suspicious? A, B, C, D, all or none? Huh? So all, if we are very pessimistic, none, if we are very optimistic. Yeah. Yes, I can clarify that they do not belong to the same patient. Okay, of because, course. yeah, okay. They do not belong to the same patient. So let's see. So none is the winning answer, and I'm very happy about it. I'll I will come back to this in a moment. So Sebi, please close the result so that um, uh, I will come back to this in the end. Now, let's go first to case number two, which is a very interesting case. JP, I know that you know it, I uh, think that you remember it. A, a blue lesion on the back uh, of, a, of an elderly man, we pr really predominated by blue color, but in a strange way. Yeah? yeah. And no, I don't say more because I want to see the uh, question and the possible answers. So, Sebastiano, if you can launch the question that people and people can vote, 
Um, which is your diagnosis here? Melanoma, regressive, seborrheic keratosis, blue nevus, basal cell carcinoma, or I don't know which would be yeah, good option. A good option, in my view, because that's not an easy lesion to evaluate. Uh, because in addition to the quite predominant blue color, there are uh, also other things that complicate a little bit. Super okay, fine. very good. So melanoma 65% vote for melanoma. Great, which is the correct answer. By the way, uh, this is a unique case because this intense blue color that we uh, see here corresponds to massive dermal regression, which is not frequent, of course, but it might occur in uh, advanced melanoma. This is the so-called tumoral melanosis. Tumoral melanosis is an histopathologic term that describes pr precisely this massive dermal regression, which is so massive that even the pathologist cannot see uh, uh, the cells, the melanocytic cells of the pre-existing tumor. That's why it's a really challenging diagnosis. But this massive dermal regression almost always corresponds to a melanoma regression and extremely rarely, if ever, it could correspond to the regression of a benign, um, of a benign lesion. So this was the first case that I would like to share. Massive regression is always suspicious. Then case number three out of four that I have, this is case number three. Let's do it very quickly. Sebastiano, please launch the question. I'm sure that here we will have a big majority of correct answers because this is a very specific finding, a, a very strong predictor of one diagnosis only. And uh, I will not say the answer yet, but of course, the correct answer is basal cell carcinoma. I would say that these blue clods or blue nests, if you prefer, are a really strong predictor of basal cell carcinoma corresponding to the very nice basaloid cells uh, in, the D, in, the, in, the, uh, in the dermis. Very good. So excellent correspondence of these roundish basaloid nests with the blue glots that we see dermatoscopically. And finally, case number four is this one. So male 56, this is the uh, clinical, this is dermoscopy. May 56, okay. And now comes the question to the audience. So what would you like to do? Send the patient home, excise it, or ask a question to the patient? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? I mean, you have been teaching for... Ask a question to the patient, meaning, okay, for example, do you like... Do you like... No, no, no uh, stop, stop. No, no, no. Do you like, uh, let's say, uh, orange juice or tea? Any, any question. Any. To the patient. Let's see the answer. Okay. Ask a question to the patient is the most voted answer. And probably this is related to the fact that for many years, we have all been saying repeatedly that the diagnosis of, the, of a blue nevus should be confirmed by the history of a long standing lesion. So you should ask the patient, sorry, how long do you have it here, sir? How long do you have this, uh, this, um, uh, this lesion there on your thigh? Or how long do you have this lesion on, on, on your scalp? And you should expect the answer to be 20 years. Okay, the point is, what if the patient says that, I don't remember, what if the patient says that well, I think that it appeared five years ago. What does it mean? So do you think, Jeppy, that it means something? Not really. Not really, yeah. So maybe uh, this, this phrase that we said so frequently in the past, so the diagnosis of the blue nevus should always be confirmed by a history of a long-standing lesion without changes, maybe, I mean, which we should just cancel it yeah, and replace it with this one that we like much more, a lesion looking like a blue nevus is a blue nevus, yeah? So much easier to remember and much easier to apply. There is only one asterisk here and the asterisk 
In fact, there is a question that we need to ask to the patient, but the question is not, how long do you have it? The question is, if you had history of melanoma, because the, the lesion that can perfectly mimic a blue nevus is not primary melanoma, but melanoma metastasis. That's the lesion that can perfectly mimic a blue nevus. And here you can see an example of a, of a cutaneous metastasis of melanoma that is really looking like a blue nevus, structureless, diffuse blue color. So this is the only thing we need to exclude every time we see a, a lesion looking like a blue nevus. If we exclude it, then a lesion looking like a blue nevus is a blue nevus. Huh? That's, that's nice. So that was it. And that's why I said that uh, in the first photograph, all these lesions are blue nevi. I mean, nothing is suspicious. They are all structureless. Of course, lesion C is not so blue. Lesion C is brownish or grayish, but still structureless. This is a common variation of a blue nevus. And lesion D is another common variation of, of blue nevus with this central white color, but again, the pattern is structureless. So no clots, no network, no structures, just structureless coloration. Okay, so very that was nice. it. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So at the end of the day, blue color should not be considered as a terrifying color, is very often uh, a nice color. Uh, Blue Niva, very nice guys. We we defined, you know, uh, in this weekend we found also a, a psychological profile of Blue Nevus. Yeah, because we know we know very well that uh, the psychological profile of Spitz Nevus is that he is a schizophrenic guy. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Then uh, so psychotic, psychotic, psychotic. Schizophrenia, schizophrenia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, then uh, the uh, it's plastic. plastic is not psychotic. It's just depression. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, blue nevi are um, narcissistic. Narcissistic, <laughs> because they are like, yeah very very you know blue blood you know they are they are blue blood feel yeah. like uh, like arrogant princes, princes. Are, yeah. yeah arrogant guys pretty arrogant yeah. guys <laughs> yeah Bruni is narcissistic yeah exactly very good okay um, so what else uh, are there any questions is there any clue to exclude melanoma meds I'm always thoughtful about melanoma meds with the primary regressed yes yes uh, uh, of course the, the, the problem uh, with melanoma meds is that they can mimic anything they can mimic blue nevi they can mimic angiomas uh, even dermal nevi sometimes so but usually fortunately uh, it's easy to understand because usually the cutaneous metastases are coming together it's very unusual that it's just a solitary yes. lesion but they come um, as multiple lesions. And then the diagnosis is facilitated by, by this uh, finding. Yeah. Uh, there are also a few questions in the, in the Q&A. Uh, a very nice question uh, slash comment is uh, about skin of color, phototype yes. 5, 6 and uh, black uh, color. There, uh, as far as we know, and maybe Nisa can add to this discussion, blue color is much more frequent in nevi, not only in blue nevi, but also in other, uh, in other nevus types. So I wouldn't say that the same rules that apply for, for Caucasians can be automatically applied uh, to skin of color because blue color is much more frequent um, uh, in them. Nisa, do you have any, any inputs on, on this point? Yeah, uh, totally agree with you, Emilio. Uh, we have a blue color in dark skin type very frequently. And uh, the long history of the lesion and perifollicular hypopigmentation around the terminal hairs uh, generally uh, is a clue uh, for a nevus. Uh, and uh, as you say, ask the patient, how long is it there? but it's really very common in dark skin types. Blue is common in every lesions, uh, ethnic keratosis, squamosac carcinoma, uh, and other dermatofibroma, all other types of uh, lesions, we observe blue color in dark skin types. 
Mm-hmm. We, we, yeah. You have to get used by the presence of so yeah. much blue color. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Another also, question is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, by gene, if melanoma metastasis, in a melanoma metastasis from a hidden melanoma, we could be missed if we ask for a past history of melanoma. Maybe it's better to ask if the lesion is changing. Sure, but the point is that it's not easy to trust such an answer uh, uh, given by the patient. Uh, what's much more reliable, in my view, is first to look the surrounding skin, because as Jeppy said, extremely rarely cutaneous metastasis will be solitary. Cutaneous metastasis, by definition, should be more than one. So we check carefully the surrounding skin to see if there are other similar lesions. And then, of course, we ask for the possibility of a previous melanoma or the possibility of a previously excised lesion that was diagnosed somehow uh, histopathologically. Uh, then what about cellular blue nevus? Cellular yeah. blue nevus is very frequently uh, represented by the last image I showed you with the combined white and blue structureless color, white and blue structureless coloration. And uh, differential diagnosis between blue nevus and melanocytoma. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yes. Very good question. Would you like Usually to say melano- melanocytoma is showing also black color. So the main differential diagnosis of melanocytoma is melanoma and not uh, blue nevus. Uh, but I would say that uh, no way that uh, melanocytoma could be left uh, untreated. So since there is this combination of blue and black, uh, usually we excise a lesion like this. And from time to time, we have good news that this is not melanoma, but melanocytoma, which is a variation on the theme of a blue nevus. It's in the field of blue nevi, but The question in my view is, if there is a possibility that that a melanocytoma looks perfectly like a blue nevus, so we miss it. That's that's the the crucial question. And to to our experience, at least, uh, I mean, uh, it never happened. And we we don't, we cannot recall an example of no. of a melanocytoma looking dermatoscopically like a blue nevus, meaning structurally diffuse blue color covering on the le- all the lesion. Is there any place for malignant blue nevus? Uh, this is also a very nice question uh, because we have a couple of reports uh, on malignant blue nevi. Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm, it's very it's very annoying for me to speak about all this malignant uh, something else than melanoma. A malignant blue nevus is a melanoma, which is re- recalling a blue nevus, but it's not per se a blue nevus. It's just morphologically similar. So nobody is anymore diagnosing a malignant blue nevus. Um, so this kind of uh, couple of papers published in the, in the past were not followed by uh, by other, um, let's say, publications. Therefore, it's a melanoma looking like a blue nevus. Yeah. Of course, you know, unfortunate, unfortunately, uh, in the last WHO classification of skin tumors, where uh, they classified nine categories of melanoma, one of these nine categories is malignant blue um, I, I don't remember if they call it malignant blue nevus or if they call it melanoma uh, in, in a blue nevus. But as you said, uh, I, I mean, the, the, uh, it was never proved that um, uh, that the blue nevus can in somehow be uh, transformed biologically into a melanoma. It's most probable that these are melanomas with some overlap, morphologic overlap, uh, with uh, uh, with blue nevi. There is also another nice question about blue nevus of the nails. And uh, rare. very rare. rare, but I was trying to find uh, one image because I have one image uh, to show. Uh, be- blue nevus of the nail is interesting because it's the only nevus type that although it develops at the nail matrix, it does not result in a melanonychia striata, it does not result in a pigmented nail band. All the other nevi of the nail matrix result in a pigmented nail band. This one, no. Why? Because it's located deep in the dermis. That's why it does not result in a pigmented nail band. Uh, if I'm able to find 
soon the image uh, I will share and show it. Uh, in the meanwhile, Jebi, uh, do you want to check if we have more yes. questions? Yes, uh, uh, Giovanni say maybe a good idea to excise blue lesions bigger than one centimeter in diameter to remove cellular bronevia or possible suspected lesions. Yes, of course, the criterion of the size is also is always very important because, I mean, a lesion which is growing more than one centimeter is definitely um, a very... <laughs> let's say, um, sparkling lesion, you know, able to, uh, to dynamically grow too much uh, as uh, compared to the regular benign lesions. Therefore, a lesion which is la very large, why not to remove it, a blue, especially if it's blue. Uh, I suppose there is also a kind, uh, another uh, retinal melanoma could present with multiple continuous metastasis if missed early. Yes, definitely. Uh, retinal melanoma can give metastasis. Usually, uh, I mean, continuous metastasis from, from uh, eye melanoma are not so frequent because usually, unfortunately, uh, it's going immediately into the, uh, into the uh, metastatic uh, internal organ, uh, brain, liver, and, and stuff like this. But why not, of course. If blue is blue predictive for malignant lesions on mucosal area, not really. Well, not it, it, it is one of the colors that we should yes. be careful. But on mucosal area, uh, we have uh, other, uh, so in, 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 in genital, we've, we've uh, of course, blue lesions must be uh, uh, carefully evaluated. But for example, in the mouth, uh, blue uh, can be seen also in uh, tattoo, amalgama tattoo, in hemangiomas. Venus uh, lakes. Yeah, Venus lakes. So, yeah. So yeah. It's but in it's general, easy. in uh, pigmented lesions, within pigmented lesions, the, the appearance of gray color, blue color, or white color are signs that should yeah. make us... Uh, be careful. Do you like it? You see the case? Yes, I like it, but I suppose I know this case. Very nice. It's a very yeah, nice case. Yeah. It's a blue nevus. It's located on the nail matrix, but there is no melanonychia striata, no uh, yeah, pigmented yeah. nail band. If there is some new formations inside <laughs> the long existing blue nevus, is any risk to malignant blue nevus during the biopsy of part of blue nevus with this new formation? Well, um, no, I mean, it never happened to me to find a blue nevus, which is then moving towards a melanoma. It never happened to me. Uh, and I suppose that, uh, you know, also in these rare reports in which uh, they speak about malignant blue nevus, they didn't find a blue nevus here and the melanoma here. You know what I mean? And so everything was this entity they called malignant brunivus, which is then, of course, corresponding to a melanoma, which is morphologically um, uh, similar to, to a brunivus. And JP and Emilio, have you ever heard about if a blue nevus is located on the scalp and if it is congenital, uh, there is a risk of malignant transformation. But if it Never. is congenital, not acquired blue nevus on the scalp, I once read this uh, information from a publication and uh, later I had a patient uh, who had a, a melanoma arised on a blue nevus and her melanoma was on the scalp. Hmm. So just coincidence, I don't know, uh, but it's extremely rare congenital blue nevus. Yeah. So this was a large blue nevus like... Uh, a no, it, it, it wasn't a large one. A small, a small blue nevus on the scalp. And in this pathology... The pathology yeah. is found on one side, the blue nevus, on the other side, the melanoma? Uh, the histopathology report uh, came from a different universal hospital, but uh, also consulted uh, to our department, and they both said that uh, this melanoma arises on a blue nevus. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there was a part... Uh, uh, so I, I didn't see the uh, lesion uh, from the onset, uh, just uh, after I began to follow up the patient, and she was also a physician, uh, so th th this is an interesting case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, as you can see, everything in life, as in the medicine and in, in general in life, can be possible. But, uh, you know, 
extremely rare things should not change our, let's say, way of thinking, you know. Another interesting question is again about scalp. Uh, blue nevi are common on the scalp, of course, but could melanoma look blue on the scalp just because the epidermis is so thick? Uh, 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 well, uh, the I don't know about the epidermis, but definitely the dermis is very thin <laughs> on the scalp. Um, uh, and um, the the point, in my view, is that um, uh, is that melanoma is looking blue uh, when it's in the into the dermis. Mm. Uh, so, irrespectively from uh, from the location. Uh, when it's blue, it's located in the dermis. Or the only point which on the scalp might be sometimes the case is when there is significant follicular involvement, since the follicles are a little bit deep, uh, deeper uh, located, then we often see this grayish, and sometimes this grayish goes also to, uh, to bluish uh, color perifollicularly mainly. Yeah. But in general, yes, of course, blue color means uh, dermis. Yes. Okay, nice. but, uh, we are running a little bit late. So a little bit late. So let's move on. I think we were able to, to answer yes. all the questions, if I'm not wrong. So, Sebastiano, where are we going to? Where are we going to? Nisa, Nisa. Nisa, and the case of the week from the Dermatoscopy uh, Forum uh, in Facebook. Nisa, the floor is yours. Nisa, your mic is You are muted now. Sorry. Okay. Uh, this patient is a female and the lesion is located on the anterior tibia and she is 72 years old. And the history is one year for this lesion. And here is the dermatoscopy. What do you think with the dermatoscopy? Of course, very odd. Um, I would say that, the, uh, uh, of course, we, we should think about melanoma, but there is another option, which is dermatofibroma. I don't know why, but uh, this, why this Ah, be... so nice. Shiny streaks everywhere, eh? Yeah, yeah, shiny streaks everywhere. But the black color is a little bit, you know, in some way uh, very suspicious for me. So anyway. In the chat, there is an answer, hemosiderotic dermatofibroma. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's, it's all possible, but the lesion is not uh, very firm on palpation. And we have some clues. If you have a look at the carefully, we have lots of superficial erosions and central ulceration. Oh, you mean BCC? You see? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and here are the answers uh, of the members and they all consider uh, yeah, mostly the dermatofibroma. And uh, here you can see the answers and some Kaposi sarcoma, but mostly dermatofibroma. Uh, but it was a Super, uh, nodular basal cell carcinoma. Oh, but the really, wow. the really dermatofibroma predominated in the answers of the yeah, participants. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Reasonable, reasonable, yeah. Yeah, and uh, two cases. Uh, both are located on the scalp and both are blue nodular lesions. Yeah. And here are the dermatoscope. Ah. And what do you think uh, with the first one and with the second one? I think it's very, very, very challenging. <laughs> can you can you go back for, for a moment on the clinical? Yeah. Okay, because the, the left case uh, clinically resembles a dermal nevus, but then dermoscopically, mm -hmm. it's really it's really odd. And uh, the uh, the first case uh, for the first case, uh, the lesion developed uh, one year ago. And for the second case, uh, it developed six months ago and grieving very rapidly. Yeah. The yeah. second case, it's easier because it, it's in the uh, field of uh, mm. uh, BCC, trichoblastoma, trichoepithelioma. Yeah. Of course, anything else is... And there is an alopecic area. The second yes. lesion is... Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh, nevus, maybe it's also there. But there is no uh, yellow background ah, around, ah. Uh, only pinkish color and uh, alopecia, 
and blue noodle reasons. They are both very difficult. And uh, for the second case, there was no uh, correct answer. Uh, for the first case, uh, the members consider basal cell carcinoma, seborrheic keratosis, pigmented squamous cell carcinoma in their differentials. Uh, and I'm giving the answer. The first one is poroma. 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 Our and friend. The one Our is friend. porocarcinoma. Poroma uh, poro and porocarcinoma. Poroma and porocarcinoma. Yeah. yeah. The first one is poroma. The second one is porocarcinoma. <laughs> Ah, so yeah. the left lesion is poroma and the yeah. right lesion is porocarcinoma. Yeah, the, the, the but this one. poroma is crazy. I mean, yeah, come on. yeah. If and, you go uh, back in the image, they, if we uh, have a look uh, at, you can see it. the vessels here. Uh, yeah. In metaphoric yeah. language, this is called callus like vessels. Uh, like yeah. yeah. And here, uh, another type of Flowers. vessel. Flowers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, suspicious for poroma. Uh, the, I have never seen a pigmented porocarcinoma. Uh, so that was my first case. Uh, and here are some uh, examples of blue <laughs> in dark skin types. Uh, dark all, skin types. Uh, dark skin types, as you can see, blue nevus and congenital nevus, basal cell carcinomas, metastatic melanoma, and dermal nevus, even it's very blue. The most impressive in my view, Nisa, is the dermal nevus, I mean, yes. which is really different from yeah. what we, we know yeah. as a dermal nevus. Yeah. And you hear melanoma and Kaposch sarcoma with blue color and cavernous hemangioma, dermatofibroma, pilomatricoma, metastatic melanoma, and again, another dermatofibroma. You and see. These, these are my cases. <laughs> Misa, I you always have amazing cases. I, I told you, I changed my mind. I told you before that uh, blue color is not should not be considered as a terrifying color. Now I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Blue is not terrifying when it's a lot. So yeah. when we have yeah. a lot of blue color, then it's okay. When we yeah. have some blue color, then it's, it's uh, tricky. <laughs> yeah. Very nice, very nice, very Wonderful. nice, very nice. But definitely, Nisa, we have to organize an episode on uh, uh, dermoscopy in skin of color. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because we all we all have to learn for, uh, at least the basics, you know. The basics, yeah. but the most interesting are the basics. This is what we need to yeah, to, to, yeah. to learn first yeah. of all. The common things, how they, they look like, exactly. and then the exceptional things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Nisa. Sebastiano, Costa. So much. No, no, no. Hey. Sebastiano, Sebastiano first. Sebastiano first. Sebi, look at these four, four beautiful guys. Well, <laughs> at least two are beautiful. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. All four are beautiful. All four. Yeah, are beautiful. Yeah. The young ones. The young ones. Well. I think that the older ones also have their charm. They're yeah, elegant. Of course. You know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. N Nisa, don't you agree as the only woman on the panel? Yeah. Like, aren't yeah. they gorgeous? Of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Of course they are. Okay. So, so uteromoscopy. From uteromoscopy. As we say every Sunday, uteromoscopy is fun. It's there. It's rising. And we we'll look forward to having you back to, on the app. And by the way, we have a new a new level in Udermoscopy, yeah. level yes. 18, if I'm not wrong. Level 18. Uh, some cases from Udermoscopy Live, as always. Uh, this lesion, which is this country? I, I Guatemala. 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 Ah, Guatemala. So a lesion from Guatemala, male, 62 years old. 60, uh, and with this lesion on the ear, this is the clinical, and this is the dermoscopy, bluish. Looks Diagnosis? Vascular, hmm? no? Yeah. I yeah. think we all agree, Jomo. and so did the audience. Wonderful. So one option is this one, on blue color. The other one, this is a lesion from Canada, chest and neck, 90 years old, and this is the dermoscopy again blue okay. easy easy one easy, easy one easy with this is beautiful may globules may globules yes may globules yeah beautiful may globules and basal cell carcinoma was found by almost all 
the people that participate. 100 dancers, eh? Yes. Wow. It's, it's there. It's going. Yeah. yeah. And Angio please. Keratoma. Angio Keratoma. Emilius? Yeah, vascular, vascular. Vascular. Misa? Vascular. Vascular. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm the only one that thought BCC on this one. <laughs> 98% well but you you want much. to be special my boy you, you are yeah. a special guy Maybe. you did not go with the 98% <laughs> yeah. you know the right. diagnoses are uh, very often democratic but sometimes they are monocratic you know so maybe you're right yeah <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. This looked a lot like a uh, novoid nest to me for some reason. For some reason. Yeah. However, I will go with the majority, and this was a vascular lesion, as the majority says. And a final uh, question. Let me go down. Ah, give me one second. Yeah. But um, I mean, the, the, also the, the quality of the cases which are posted by the by the users is extremely nice. I mean, yes, very it's good amazing. cases and uh, with teaching points. It's amazing. In the meanwhile, there is a question in so, the chat: uh, if there is, if there are new formations inside the long existing blue nevus. Is there any risk to malignant blue nevus during the biopsy of part of the blue nevus with this information? So we, we replied to this question saying that uh, I never saw uh, 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 a changing blue blue nevus, but uh, and then we discussed the case that Nisa had uh, a few years ago. No, I, I think that the, the question, it, as far as I understand, it says that if there is a risk because you do the biopsy. And the answer is obviously no. If this is the question, the answer is not. So there is no risk because of the biopsy. Uh, so the biopsy does not include okay. Okay. any kind of risk. Okay, okay. Yeah. And final final one, it's not from uterimoscopy, it's just ah. on, on, the, on the top of blue color. Jeppy, diagnosis? Yeah, this is, uh, of course, uh, immediately um, the mind is going to BCC, but I'm um, not completely sure uh, because of this uh, granularity on the right side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, even though the vessels are quite sharp, sharply focused and the black area, I suppose, is a, cr- a blood crust. So mm-hmm. mainly a BCC, but who, who knows? Who knows? Emilio? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you're trying to fool us, but this should be a BCC. Come on. Well, I am trying to fool you, as you can imagine. Yeah. And uh, let me see here. Here we go. And this was part part of a lesion. Ah, look at this. Ah. Wow. Wow wow, 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 wow. The large 17 centimeter in diameter. Wow. Fantastic. Incredible. Costas, you made, a, you made fun of us. Yes. No, <laughs> I made a point. <laughs> very successfully, very successfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank Excellent. you. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Misa. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Baci and Brazzi. Baci, Baci. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye Costas. Bye. bye. Uh, I know that you have to go back to work, so thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, wonderful cases, both from the forum and from the, and from the app. I mean, uh, every day, so many wonderful cases are posted and shared. That's, and that's really, that's really great. Uh, and uh, what else do we have to do? Should we do anything more? Of course. Of course, we we of need course. we need to go to the Penelope's gift. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Without Penelope, uh, the episode cannot be cannot be concluded. Penelope's challenge. 
which orange is is usually related to the previous topic, which was orange. Orange challenge. So right? a lot of orange this on your screens. Quite quite difficult, I must say. Uh, always, Penelope's challenges yes. are not easy. Okay, so, but let's go very very let's say very instinctively. No? Instinctively. Okay. One. One. Uh, hydrocystoma. Hydrocystoma. Good point. Uh, two. Two xanthogranuloma. Or xanthoma, yeah. yeah. Three. Three BCC. Yes, very probable. Or sarcoidosis. Or granulomatous disorder. Four. Four uh, de purpuric dermatitis. Lichen aureus. Lichen aureus. Five. Five. Uh, no idea. Uh, no, no, no. Grover's disease. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Or uh, or or uh, solitary acantholytic yes. discheratoma also yes acantholytic discheratosis discheratoma yes. six uh, six uh, no idea no idea is a very good very good option yes very good option yeah. so should we Nisa do you want to add anything to these predictions or should we open the envelopes <laughs> uh, Nisa again you are muted. Waiting impatiently. <laughs> okay, let's see. So, your hydrohistoma was finally a BCC, but don't worry, come on, okay. it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, the xanthoma was a xanthoma. The, uh, the other one was uh, uh, sarcoidosis. As you said, it's, uh, there is a very known overlap with BCC. Very good answer for, for uh, number four. Grower. Yeah. Purpura of yeah. Dukas, Dukas and Kapetanakis. Kapetanakis. Yeah. Dukas. Dukas. Duka. Bravo, Jeff. Dukas. Dukas. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Grover's disease, also impressive. Yeah. Impressive diagnosis. Very good. Yeah. Ah, granuloma nullare. And granuloma nullare. Granuloma nullare sometimes might display orange color, sometimes not. Yes. Uh, in the interstitial subtype, there is. Uh, no, there is not orange color in the palisading subtype. There is orange color. Brava, nice. Penelope. Brava, Penelope. Excellent. Thank you so much. Send us your cases in the Moscopy Happy Hour at gmail.com. And uh, I would say that uh, we do have uh, several cases, but I would say that we show them together. Uh, next, next week? Next, uh, after the... Ah, the it's, it's very late. So should we go quickly now? Why not? Yeah. Okay, let's go quickly now. Well, Gary, yeah. uh, 35-year-old lady, three months postpartum, the lesion was first noted soon after delivery. How would the audience manage this lesion? Oh, nice. Nice. What is this? Uh, well, but it should be removed, spitz needles. Spitz, spitzoid looking lesion in 35, easy answer. Uh, irrespectively of the, of the pregnancy, anyhow, in this age, should be excised. Still, the chances are higher for a needles, but it should be excised. Sidu Sid, uh, 60 years old lady, is your grins, uh, had a lesion on the left cheek, which is now yellow. Uh, what are your thoughts, kind as regards seed? So, this is the last man. Xanthelasma. Xanthelasma. Yeah. Uh, it should be xanthelasma. Uh, I don't know. Do you yeah. have any it's other ideas? No? Okay. Very good. Then, Alberto Sticky. Uh, ah, yes. Come on. This is a case that I really don't know what to say. I saw it earlier. Uh, Alberto says, and of course, I believe in him that this is a melanoma 1.75, but this is what you see. Oh, oh God. God. Merson oh. melanoma. I hope that Alberto is wrong and <laughs> sends us a wrong image. No, no, but, but this it could uh, be a verrucous melanoma. Yeah. yeah it's otherwise, melanoma, it's a verrucous, verrucous melanoma. Of course, it's a verrucous melanoma, yeah, which is yeah, yeah. really, really terrifying. 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 Because this is a lesion that everybody is, is diagnosing as a seborrheic Everybody. And yeah. I cannot see, at least, I don't know if you can, but I cannot see in the image not even one clue that could make me think about melanoma. It's, the only thing that I could yeah. say is that 
we don't see in dermoscopy uh, clear cut seborrheic keratosis criteria. So we, we just see hyperkeratosis. Yeah. And that's all, just hyperkeratosis. Yeah. And, you know, just uh, uh, on, on uh, uh, <laughs> let's say, in, uh, in, in retrospect, uh, there is this uh, brownish color at the periphery, top left. Yes. Uh, ah, you mean here that uh, yes, maybe, maybe with a little, little bit, bit of gel could be seen uh, better as a brownish color. Mm -hmm. If there is a brownish color there, then this could be also a, a clue that might might suggest excision of this lesion, but terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying, yeah. really. And then Evelina. Uh, uh, okay, uh, there is a long text. Thank you for your text, Evelina, and for your nice words. Um, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is related to our topic. This is uh, 20 years old, blue nevus from birth. birth. So this is the, the scenario we were discussing, mm -hmm. increasing according to the age. During the last four years after the onset of, uh, of Minarc, she noted the appearance of two formations within the nevus slightly increased over four years. Uh, I remember now the images. They are not very good, the, the dermatoscopic images, but the clinical yes. is quite good. So we can see uh, the flat blue nevus and the two nodules that were formed uh, yeah. inside. Uh, this uh, is the, the case that I mentioned, Emilio. Uh, this is a congenital blue nevus and be yeah. careful with the congenital blue nevus. Yeah, okay. But still, I believe that these two nodules are referring to two uh, part of the blue nevus. But was the lesion excised or no, what? Uh, no, no, no. The, uh, asking if we would take a biopsy. Yes, I would take a biopsy of one of these two nodules just to make sure that nothing bad is going on. But I don't think not, uh, something bad is going on. Yeah, hopefully. So uh, let's say that, uh, I mean, since this is a congenital nevus, as in any congenital nevus, benign nodular proliferations might occur and less frequently melanoma also might develop. So uh, uh, I would say that let's hope and let's believe that they are benign nodular proliferations in, uh, in this congenital blue-like nevus. Okay, very good, very good. Very good. So, very nice cases, by the way. Very, very nice cases. Thank very you nice. so much to thank all of you for the cases you sent us. And uh, so now I think that we can close the episode. What do you think? No, come oh, on. Come no. on. We are, we are here waiting for the Kahoot. That's why we are here. Come on. <laughs> That's why. But, but JP, today is a sad Kahoot because there is no prize. Eh, you know. Mm. That's the, pro the problem. We we announced uh, last week that this was the last time we had uh, we could uh, give as a prize uh, the digital training course that uh, Emilio and myself uh, did online, and now it's just for honor, for the joy of playing, and for the yeah. honor, of course, of yeah. of uh, winning uh, this competition. So here is the pin. And I have to tell you that I like very much and I'm curious what's going to happen with the cases I selected for this week. Uh -huh. They are not easy, okay. but I believe and I hope that they are feasible nowadays. Okay. It's a facial challenge. All the lesions are located on the face. And in fact, all of them were seen very, very recently. Uh, and I think that all of them are uh, quite... Uh, interesting. At least four out of five are feasible, in my view. Let's see if this is going to be confirmed or not. So we have already a good number of players. But we will wait a few seconds since more people are joining. Yes. Pam, 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 pam. Pam, yes, pam, yes, yes. Pam, pam, pam. So more so, or less we are, yeah. More or less we are approaching. Uh, so next week, uh, let's repeat once more. Next week we are not here because of the Eastern. The week after we are not here because of the Orthodox Eastern. We are back in uh, on uh, May the 1st. 
with a brand new episode and we will be together uh, during May, every Sunday until the last Sunday of May. And in the last Sunday of May, we have to find something nice to do to yes. close season one. Yes. So I think that we can go. Uh, let's start. Very good. I'm very curious. Monday. Monday. Okay. Monday. Tiny lesions. All my lesions are not more than three or four millimeters. Okay. okay. And this is the first one. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. Nice, eh? Mm -hmm. Interesting case. And let's see the options. Monday case diagnosis. Spitz nevus, lentigo maligna. Seborrhea keratosis, pigmented actinic keratosis. Uh, pop. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Speech nevus, why not? Okay. Yes, for one, for one, just one answer, yeah, just correct one. answer one. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's good. A quite fancy seborrhea keratosis yes. with uh projections brown projections at the periphery yeah. but with a very sharply demarcated border overall yeah very good seed is uh Seed. leading the scoreboard for the moment and now we go to tuesday even smaller yes smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> uh thermoscopy ah uh -huh. But it's impressive. I, I, I'm very happy that we are now able to, to, to assess lesions, so small lesions like this one. Yeah. Let's see. This is uh, three millimeter. Yes, it's three millimeter. Come on, it's nothing. Uh, nevus, lentigo maligna, seborrheic keratosis or pigmented actinic keratosis. I predict that we will have 72 correct answers. 72? 72. Hmm. Okay. Wow, I was this close. Seven. Wow. I was close. Very good. Come on. This is Come not on. easy. It's this not is not easy. One. This is not yeah. easy, but today it's feasible. That's yeah. that's very yeah. good news. Very, very, very optimistic news. Very good news. Okay, Sid. No, Gian Paolo. Hey, Gian Paolo. Gian Paolo from my group. How do you know that it's, it's not a common Yeah, name? because he's struggling since a long time. <laughs> Let's see. Hopefully today he <laughs> to, gets... To win this is, this is Wednesday. And this is uh, a peculiar case. Nice. I think so. Uh, a nodule, uh, non-pigmented or slightly pigmented nodule. This is what you see dermatoscopically. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Okay. 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 And let's see now the options. Blue nevus, basal cell carcinoma, angioma, pilomatricoma. Mm, very tough case, let me tell you. Yeah, tough case. I would exclude just one diagnosis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the majority oh, voted for BCC, which BCC, was a reasonable, reasonable, reasonable answer, definitely. Yeah. Although it's a nodular lesion, therefore, in a in a nodular BCC, we would like to see yeah. better vessels, exactly. larger vessels, more prominent vessels. But okay, anyhow, and less pinkish color, less pinkish color, less less pink structureless color. And by the way, I realized that these uh, structures here that could be also interpreted as blue avoid nests, of course, but they are rather vascular. Uh, in fact, they have been described in the literature in pyloma, pylomatricomas yeah. as a possibly The frequent. glue here for pylomatricoma is top left, this white, white color. Area. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you can say that there is a clue for pyelomatricoma. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, this lesion was excised with the, the clinical suspicion, mainly of basal cell carcinoma, and the answer was uh, surprise. Uh, but I would say that I think that uh, there is something didactic in Definitely. this case. I like it. Which brings Radia. Radia. On the top. Radia is a brand new name. I don't remember yeah. this name uh, in the past, and this brings us to Thursday. We go back to our small 
tiny flat pigmented lesions and here is one more again from last week and this is what you get uh, dermatoscopically and this is what uh, let's see what's going to happen with uh, the voting so nevus lentigo maligna seborrheic keratosis or pigmented actinic keratosis hai capito hai capito hai Ho capito, capito. Yeah. Let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, that was much yes. easier, much easier than the previous one. Yes, easier. Uh, uh, 90 correct answers, of course, Lentigo Maligna. Again, however, it's impressive that impressive. we are able to recognize at this with this percentage tiny melanomas like, like this one. That's really nice. And uh, Lee is or a lie is uh leading the scoreboard and john paolo is 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 uh, number two number two and everything will be judged on uh, with uh, friday case which is another slightly pigmented facial lesion again and this is what you get dermatoscopically and this is uh, and these are the options feasible 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 i think so Nivus, lentigo, maligna, seborrheic keratosis, solar lentigo, or pigmented actinic. Let's see, let's see. Can let's you see what's going on. So mm -hmm. I think that we have 85 correct answers. Mm -hmm. 85, you think so? 77. Okay. Yeah, very close. Very close. Pigmented actinic keratosis with nice. the so-called WWF. Yes. Yes. Why look at the look at the stairs of this. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Ready for the podium? Let's go to the podium. Three. BF. BF. Congratulations Brava. to BF. Giampaolo, second, bravo. Second, bravo, Giampaolo. And L I Lee. Lee, Lee, Lee. Lee is the winner of this uh, of this Kahoot challenge uh, of the Moscopy Happy Hour, episode twenty four. And let's see if Sebastiano will be able to uh, to find Lee so that we can congratulate her or him for his or her win um, in today's competition. Uh, do we have anything? Uh, ah, Alberto is saying in the, in the Q&A that, uh, that he also had the same reaction, so surprised with this verocus melanoma very much. And uh, they were thinking about the collision of a seborrheic keratosis and the nevus. Thank God that you <laughs> decided to excise it, Alberto. Yes. It was a really difficult case. Yeah, uh, and it's a great job that you did. Um, in the case of verucus melanoma on palpation, is it hard? Well, it's like a verucus lesion. Verucus lesions are yeah. somehow hard in palpation, but uh, not really hard. I would say. Yeah. So. Okay, let's see if Lee is, is able to join us. Sebastiano is um, Who is Lee? trying to locate Who is Lee. Lee? I'm here. Lorena Lisenku is Lee. Lorena Lisenku. Ah, so, here we Lorena, are. Lorena, if you are um, uh, available, uh, uh, Sebastiano, please allow her to enter. Yeah, there yes. we go. Here we are. Lorena. Hi, Lorena. Lorena, I can guess that you are from Romania. Hello, yes. Yes. Romania, which city? Cluj Napoca. What? What? Cluj Napoca. Ah, Cluj. Okay, Cluj. Very good, bravissima. Very good. Thank you very much. Lorena, are you are you a resident or a specialist? A resident. A resident. You see, you see, I told you many times that this is a game for young people. I yes. mean, <laughs> no question, no question, no question. <laughs> very good. Thank you so much, Lorena. Thank you for joining us. Congratulations. Thank you very much for the nice opportunity. Thank we you. thank you. We thank you. Bene, ragazzi. So, uh, end of the story. 
Lisa, thank you again. Hi, thank Sandy, you. thank you as usual. Emilio, I love you. I mi I will miss you. Two weeks, come on, it's too much. Anyhow, we will see what we're gonna do. Yeah. We have we have the logo, the signal again. Sebastian. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.